What is up guys? Welcome to Coach Moore's new video on functions and their inverses. I am Just Mitchell Sports Talks and once you're done watching this great math content, come over to my channel Just Mitchell Sports Talks on YouTube. I do great sports content. Enjoy the video. Yo guys, what's up man? That was the intro by Justin Mitchell, man. Uh, part of your junior class. Yo, y'all check out that guy's YouTube, all right? That guy is official. Anyway, man, let's go ahead and jump right into this Algebra 2. Uh, we're looking at functions and the inverses, as Justin said, all right? And the thing I want to talk about is the vertical line test, all right? When you look uh, at a relation, all right, and you want to determine if it was a function or not, all right, we use what was called a vertical line test, which is simply a vertical line. All right, and what you would do with that vertical line is you would look at a function. All right, let's say this was on a graph. And, and if I drew a vertical line on that graph, like so, all right, I could determine if that relation was a function or not. All right, see how this touches that function twice? Well, that, that, that wasn't a function, okay? That relation wasn't a function, all right? Um, similarly, the horizontal line test will determine if the inverse of a function is a function. All right, the horizontal line. So, again, the, the, the thing we're trying to do here is use a horizontal line, like so, draw a horizontal line to determine if the inverse of a function is a function. So, real quick, man, let me zoom in so you can see the box here where it breaks it down a little bit more, man. Um, Right here it says, if any horizontal line passes through more than one point on the graph of the relation, the inverse relation is not a function, all right? If it passed through more than one point, more than one point, all right? So, here's what they did. You have this relation right here, all right? And you do the horizontal line, there's the first one, it touches one time, cool, all right? If you did it here, it touches one time. Cool. The horizontal line touches that graph one time. This is an uh, inverse of a function. All right. Or this inverse is a function. All right. Let me say it that way because I, I totally botched that a second ago. This inverse is a function. But right here, all right, if you do the horizontal line test, it touches the function once. It touches the function twice. Therefore, this inverse is not a function. All right. You do it here. It touches once. It touches twice. It is not a function. The thing is, one touch. All right, the horizontal line touch is one time. All right, so let's do a couple of examples. All right, the instructions here, guys, please read your instructions, man. We get away from that. Um, we just look at it and assume we know what we're supposed to do. Not a good habit to practice. All right, this one says, use the horizontal line test on the graphs below to determine if the inverse of each relation is a function. So here we go. Uh, vertical line, I mean horizontal line test, which is uh, this one's already done. The x, uh, the x um, axis acts, acts, excuse me, as a horizontal line. See, if I trace it, it touches that one time, all right? You can do it anywhere you want, only one touch, all right? One touch. All right, so this passes the horizontal line test. So, yes, this is a function, all right? Um, if you did this one, one, two, three, four, no, guys, that touched way too many times. All right, one, only one, okay. This one, if I did the horizontal line test, boom, one time, one time, right? Yes, this is a function. And if you did this, that's twice, guys, so no. That will not be a function, okay? This relation is not a function, all right? So, man, we got to talk about doing the inverse, guys, finding the inverse of a, of a function, okay? Man, the big, big, big deal here, man, is first of all switching X and Y and solving for Y. Guys, you got to switch X and Y, and then you solve for Y, all right? So this is going to take practice on your part. You have to work on solving these for Y. All right, they can be linear, they can be quadratic, they can be cubic, exponential, 
uh, it could be a radical expression or radical function. It could be absolute value function. Guys, it doesn't matter. Swap x and y and solve for y. Um, the only one, what, what we covered it, is going to be the uh, logs, all right? When you, when you saw, swap x and y, you might have to do a little rewriting from log to exponential or exponential to log form, all right? But um, God, swap x and y, solve for y, okay, with all the different techniques we've learned this semester, man. So hopefully uh, in your bag of tricks, you can pull that out and still be fine, okay? So don't forget. Um, how to do this. Now, there's a couple of examples here that's written out for you. Um, with that being said, I'm just going to kind of talk through it and go over it, but you'll have it right here on your notes to reference whenever you need it, okay? Uh, for this first one, it says find the inverse of the following function, determine if the function, determine if it is a function, all right? This part right here, determine if it is a function. We can use our vertical line test, all right? And then state the domain and range, all right? The domain and range is your x and your y, all right, range, your domain, your range. All right, notice the um, range of f of x is y is greater than zero for this one. All right, y is greater than zero, and the domain is all real numbers. Um, this is a quadratic, guys. All right, this is a quadratic. So let's go ahead and solve the inverse. Here's the function. All right, if you were to graph this, um, matter of fact, let's go ahead and pull up a graph. All right, so what I did was I took our equation, one-half of x plus 2 squared, and I put it in the calculator. I used 0.5 instead of one-half, um, just so there wasn't any issues um, with putting it in, because sometimes you guys don't have enough practice in how to handle that. But I used 0.5, so 0.5x plus 2 squared, right? And we graph that, okay? So there's the graph. And the vertical line test, which means the straight line, all right, if, I, if I drew a straight line right here, it would just go up and down. It'll only touch that graph once, okay? It'll touch that graph once. So we know that the function, we know that the this relation is a function, all right, because the vertical line test tells it it only touches once, all right? So now here's why they said the, demi, the domain, excuse me, is or the range is greater than zero. See how this comes down to y equals zero? All right, this is y equals zero right here, y is zero, and then it goes up from there. So y is greater than zero, okay? That's why that is um, y is greater than zero. That's why the range is what it is. The domain, this stretches left infinitely or to negative infinity, and it stretches right infinitely. So the, the, the range is all real numbers, okay? Now, um, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and do the inverse, okay? And on the inverse, rule number one, you have, you guys know f of x and y is the same thing, all right? So we have y and x, all right? You got to swap them. That's the first step, swap x and y, all right? Swap x and y. So now that I've swapped x and y, all right, I'm going to work this out. It's all right here, but I'm going to talk through it. All right, so you have x equals one half of y plus two squared. Okay, so this now is the function, and we're going to solve for y to find the inverse. The first thing, guys, you can't do anything in these parentheses until you deal with this exponent, which is squared. Okay, um, I want to eliminate this squared. So what I'm going to do on both sides, as you can see right here is you take the square root on both sides. And that is how I'm going to eliminate this right here, this radical. I mean, excuse me, how I'm going to eliminate this exponent, okay? So the square root and the square cancels, and on the right side I have plus or minus the square root of x, okay? And again, the square and the square root was eliminated, so what's left is 1 half y plus 2, all right? Then I'm going to subtract 2, because I can't divide by one half yet. All right, so you end up with negative two plus or minus the square root of x, all right, and it equals one half of y. All right, then from there, we're going to multiply by two on both sides. That way we can get rid of the twos. Like that, multiply by two on both sides. 
and you'll end up with I'm gonna distribute the two so you have negative four well it's right here all right I'm gonna take it a step further though y equals or y inverse equals um, negative four plus or minus the square root of x all right I distribute that to the x 2x sorry 2x let me rewrite it so it looks a little better negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root of x all right there we go that would be your final answer okay now a thing I want to point out to you is because of the plus or minus symbol uh, there can be two y values for one x guys um and that's not true you can't have that I don't know if you guys remember the whole input output um idea man but for one x you can only have one y all right um it can't give you two y's one x can't give you two different y's if that makes sense so um the inverse is not a function so when y'all get this right here the inverse is plus or minus all right the inverse can't be a function okay we can't use that x because it, it won't work all right you can't have two x's for one y excuse me one x can't give you two different y's okay so remember that about the plus or minus rule all right now moving along keeping it going it says find the inverse of this function all right determine if it is a function and the domain or range so we're going to go ahead and find the inverse all right they said find the inverse of each function so we've already established that this is a function we're going to find the, um, the inverse first so the first step to find the inverse is swap x and y so we're going to say x equals y cubed minus 3. I'm sorry, minus 2. y cubed minus 2. All right, and then we solve for y. So we're going to add 2 in this case. So you can do 2 plus x equals y cubed. And then you take the cube root to get rid of this cube and if you do it on the right side you got to do it on the left side so the cube root on both sides the cubes cancel over here the cube root and the cube cancel to have y and over here you just have the cube root of x plus 2 all right so there's your inverse now we got to determine if it's a fact if it's a function or not so i'm going to graph this just so you can see it so hold on one second all right, I have here the cube root of x plus 2, and we're going to graph it like so, and let's see what it does. All right. Okay. So first off, man, I want to point out that if we use the horizontal line test, all right, that only touches one time, right? If I do it again, it only touches one time. So the horizontal line test tells us that this is a function, okay? This is a function. So we're good in that regard, all right? So now we need to check and see the domain and range, all right? Well, check this out. This doesn't stop going to the left, all right, ever. It keeps going forever. So the domain continues to the left to negative infinity, all right? This doesn't stop going to the right ever. So the domain continues to the right infinitely, all right? It also expands. If you notice, this is getting larger and larger and wider and wider and wider. It'll never stop getting wide, nor will this stop getting uh, wide or going down all right so we're going to say that the domain and range for both of these all right is all real numbers all right so first of all the inverse or you know since we're doing a function the inverse of the function equals the inverse of this function equals the cube root of x plus 2 all right and then the domain, guys, I'm just going to put D. The domain is all real numbers. All right. And the range is all real numbers as well. All right. Or some of you guys may put negative infinity to positive infinity. That's fine as well. Okay. All right. Let's look at our next problem. All right. Now let me erase so I can have a little space. All right, for this one, okay, we're going to, first of all, swap x and y. So you have x equals the cube root of y plus 1. All right, now we're going to solve it. 
So we got to get rid of this cube root. And how do we get rid of the radical? We cube it. All right, which means I got to cube this side. So the cube and the cube root on this side cancels. It's just y plus 1 remaining. And over here we have x cubed. Now I need to subtract 1 on both sides. So x cubed minus 1 is x cubed minus 1. And that equals y. So our inverse of x equals uh, x cubed minus 1. All right. Now, I'm going to graph it real quick so you can see the domain and range. All right, so as you can see, there it is, x cubed minus 1. And when I hit graph, there's our graph, okay, right here. So, um, guys, that continues infinitely uh, up, infinitely down. So that the range is all real numbers. Notice that this is getting wider to the left and wider to the right. So the domain, too. It's all real numbers. So domain, all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers, okay? All right. For this section right here, it says if two functions are inverses of each other, they undo each other, all right? Undo each other, all right? So the composition, remember composition where you have f of g of x or g of f of x, or where you plug one function into the other function, well, here, if I take f of x and I plug in f inverse of x, or if I have f inverse of x and I plug in f of x, I'm going to get x. All right, either way it goes, I'm going to get x because they undo each other. So here's what I mean. So take this first example, 3x minus 1 and 1 third x plus 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function here. I'm going to plug it into this function. All right, or another way to think about it is, Take f of x, 3x minus 1, all right? I'm going to substitute this g of x function in place of that x. So instead of x here, I'm going to put the g of x function right where the x would have been. You see that? Again, I took this function and put it where x is. So don't look at it as this x and these go, they don't. All right. I'm removing this x and putting this function where that x was. All right. Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, just backtrack a little bit and look at it again. I put this function right where the x was, okay? So now we simplify. All right. I'm going to distribute the 3. 3 times 1 third x. The 3 is canceled, so it's just x. 3 times 1 third, all right, is x. And then 3 times 1 is 3. All right, I still have the minus 1 here. And now simplify it. 3 minus 1 is 2. So you get x plus 2. Because I got x plus 2, they're not inverses. All right, if they were truly inverses of each other, my answer would be just x. All right, but I didn't get that here. All right, I did not get that. So they're not inverses of each other. This f and this g, they're not inverses, okay? But let's look at this other example I have for you. This other example shows us um, f of x is 1 over x minus 1, and g of x is 1 over x plus 1, all right? These are just restrictions. We're not really looking at that. We just want to take this function, g of x, plug it, into f of x, or put it right there where that x is, and then see if it cancels, okay? So let's get this a try. Here's what we got. We have 1 over x minus 1, right? That's f of x, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is take g of x function, 1 over x plus 1, and I'm going to put it right here where the x is, all right, right here where the x is. So instead of x being right here, I'm going to put 1 over x plus 1, okay? Now, first of all, what are my like terms? All right, let's see what I got left. I have 1 minus 1. That cancels. That's 0. So I have 1 over 1 over x, all right? So now I got to divide. What's up, man?
um, one divided by one over x is remember the key change keys change flip rule. All right, well I keep this one. All right, keep the one. Hold on, I made that way too big. Let me backtrack. Keep the one at the top. Change this from multiplication. I mean division to multiplication, and flip that one. Right. But what happens with those ones? They cancel, and I'm left with just x. All right, just x. So therefore, these are inverses of each other, okay? They're inverses of each other. All right, and if you were to do the opposite right here, all right, if you went put f inside of g like so, all right, you'd end up with... Uh, when you keep trying to flip this, the ones will cancel out, and you just have x minus 1 plus 1, x minus 1, or excuse me, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and you're left with just x. So they're inverses of each other, okay? Now, you try these, all right, um, and then, like, pause it for a second. You try them, all right? Plug one into the other one, plug the other one into, uh, you know, vice versa. And then um, see if you just get x and determine if they're inverses of each other, okay? So pause it, give it a try, and then press play and check yourself, all right? All right, hopefully, man, you paused it and you have enough time. All right, so let's check. First, I'm going to do f, oops, f of g of x, meaning I'm going to put g inside of f. So I'm going to take this, excuse me, and I'm going to plug that into where that x is. So what I end up with is 2 thirds, remember, put this where the x is. x is right here next to the 2 thirds. So see 2 thirds? I'm going to put this right next to it like the x was. Like that, all right? And then don't forget your plus 6 right there. Plus 6, okay? So now let's simplify, okay? Two-thirds times three-halves, all right? Well, those cancel out, so that's just one, one X. And then two-thirds times nine, guys, all right? If you remember, man, um, and you can do it like this. Two times negative nine is negative 18. Negative 18 divided by three is negative six. And then you still have the plus six out here, right? Um, so, and I'm going to just do that for you again. If you go two-thirds times negative nine, guys, negative nine. Well, that's nine over one. All right, so you'll see it. So, two times negative nine is negative 18. Negative 18 divided by three. Three times one is three. That gives you the negative six, okay? That's where I got negative six from, in case you're questioning that. All right, so that's negative six. And then finally, as you can see, negative six and positive six. Negative six plus six is zero, so I have x. All right, so the first part checks out. All right, g into x. So now, guys, now that we did f of g of x, I just want to show you, man, g of f of x. All right. So this time, what we're going to do, instead of putting g into f, we're going to put f into g, like that. So it's going to go right there where that x is. All right, sorry my arrow is so ugly. But here we go. We take g. We're going to put it right there, right next to the 3 halves. So you have 3 halves times, this is what we're substituting for that x. So we're going to put it right there next to 3 halves. 2 over 3x plus 6. And then we still have minus 9 right here. All right, minus 9. So now, 3 halves times 2 thirds when you distribute it. All right, that cancels. The 3's cancel, the 2's cancel. So that's just x, 1x. And 3 halves, if you do 3 times 6, I'm going to write it out over here, 3 halves times 6 over 1, 3 times 2, 18, divided by 2, okay. So you get 3 halves times 2, 18 divided by 2, that's 9, all right, so you get 9 minus 9, okay. And then 9 minus 9, of course, is 0, so I get x. So see how those two undid each other, and I got x here and x here? They are inverses of each other, okay. They are inverses. All right, or yes, all right, or yes, that works, okay? And then over here, this one. 
So for number four here, we're going to check f of g of x, which means we're going to put g inside of x. So see where that x is? We're going to put that right there. All right, so when we do that, we end up with the square root of x minus 5 squared plus 5, okay? Now, what we end up with here, guys, is a polynomial, which you've got to do twice. All right, square root of x minus 5. times the square root of x minus 5, all right, because it's squared, so you got a binomial, you have to do it twice, all right, plus 5. So when you foil this, you get the square root of x, actually, the square root, let me, let me walk you through it. The square root of x times the square root of x is just x, all right, the square root of x times 5, my negative 5 is negative 5, square root of x, negative 5 times the square root of x is negative 5, square root of x, and negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. All right. When you simplify this, negative 5 and negative 5, you end up with x minus 10 square root of x plus 25. And as you can see, it doesn't simplify beyond that. It doesn't undo um, each other. Okay. So I'm going to stop there because if this doesn't undo it, then the other one, I don't have to check it. Um, they don't undo each other. So that is it, man. Um this concludes this video. Hey, uh, make sure you practice. You have a quiz coming up very shortly after this uh, lesson. So uh, I think you have a review tomorrow and then the quiz the following day. So make sure you uh, practice, guys. All right, let's finish strong. Finish the semester strong. Um, hopefully this helps, man. Give me a like if it does. And if you haven't, man, subscribe, all right? Subscribe. Appreciate it.